After a year of war, Ukraine has seen a lot of this. 12 Russia and Ukraine have been focusing on long-range weapons. Which means that finding enough of this has become a major priority for both sides. Well, this is without question the most intensive artillery war with the most intensive artillery battles since the Korean War. And in a war like this, military commanders can never have enough ammunition. Uh, was that the current rate of uh, ammunition consumption is uh, higher, bigger than the current rate of production. That's a factual thing. But if ammunition is so decisive, why not just use less or produce more? Both Russia and Ukraine are burning through a lot of resources as they pound each other with long-range artillery weapons. The weapons themselves come in many shapes and sizes. Some look like tanks with a big cannon, and some are towed behind a truck. Both of these shoot shells, but they are also artillery systems, which launch rockets. Russia sees artillery as the center, as the central land weapon. They call artillery the red god of war. So the war is being fought that way because that's the way Russia fights its wars and Ukraine has been forced into that. Artillery weapons can shoot far. Conventional guns up to 30 or 40 kilometers and some rocket launchers 300 kilometers or more. This means they can hit enemy targets behind the front lines. Ukraine's military says the American HIMARS artillery rocket system is enabling them to hit enemy ammunition depots. But to hit anything, both rocket and shell shooting artillery need a lot of ammunition. Estimates for how much ammunition both sides are using in the Ukraine war vary widely. Western experts estimate Ukraine used between 6,000 and 7,000 artillery shells a day in the summer of 2022, and Russia between 20,000 and 60,000. Exact numbers are military secrets. But even when considering conservative estimates, that's more than either side can produce itself. The United States, Ukraine's main supplier of ammunition, only produced around 500 rounds a day at the time. And that's just counting conventional shells, not rockets. When it comes to Russian supplies, it's clear the country is digging deep into its stocks. Ukrainian officials say Russia is firing less artillery shells now than last year and using old ammunition which suggests the Russian military is trying to conserve shells. Ukraine, on the other hand, has to deal with a mix of old Soviet equipment and modern weapons supplied by Western allies. Ukraine is dependent on those allies to deliver enough ammunition for the weapons they provided. And they need to deal with the logistical issues caused by all these different weapons needing all kinds of different supplies and parts. It's an absolute nightmare. So Ukraine has a zoo of equipment from, uh, I think, about a dozen different sources. Most of them use NATO standard shells. However, when you get into the woods of uh, ammunition supply, you also have to consider things like the charges used, which differ according to the, the, we the particular artillery weapon you're using. So multiple supply chains forward create a problem. Both artillery shells and rockets might seem like basic ammunition in a modern military, but producing them is time-consuming and expensive. The United States is trying to up its capacity to produce 20,000 shells a month to meet Ukraine's needs. Meanwhile, Ukrainian troops use up thousands of shells a day. So over the last 20 years, the West has been engaged in pointless wars, which many people, including me, regard as displacement activity. Now, few of those conflicts have required much in the way of ammunition, be it artillery or any other kind. However, it's fair to say that some countries, and I'm thinking here particularly the United Kingdom, have found themselves, let's say, embarrassed because their stocks in these limited wars have become depleted. The situation is similar with rockets. Standard ammunition for the HIMARS costs around $160,000 per rocket. One shot might destroy enemy equipment worth millions, but replenishing supplies is neither cheap nor quick. It takes years 
or it will take years to replenish the stocks that have already been given to Ukraine. However, should needs require it, the West has significant artillery, produ artillery shell production capability. And that's not just the United States. The question is, do we have the will to order now millions of rounds, because that's what we're talking about, given the rate of consumption in Ukraine, uh, over, the next, over the next couple of years? So much for the Ukrainians. Information about Russia's ability to manufacture new ammunition is harder to find. But reports of Russia buying weapons from North Korea and Iran hint at low supplies. They're digging into stocks that were made many years ago and that uh, would be compromised in terms of their quality and for what it's worth probably safety as well. I don't think they're prioritizing either quality, safety or precision in, 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 uh, in, in their delivery of art artillery support. In addition, Russia's ability to produce long-range rockets is likely impaired by international embargoes on computer chips. Russia is also using more and more Iranian-made drones for attacks it used to conduct via long-range missiles. Western officials have taken this as a sign that Russia is running low on the latter. Russia is clearly running short of cruise missiles. The Ukrainian intelligence service reports that Russian cruise missiles are now being found, or parts are found, that were made in October, which may, would tend to indicate that, that um, uh, legacy supplies have, have run, run short to a point where they're relying on month-to-month on, on -month production. Both sides are now having to ration supplies, including ammunition, and upping capacities to restock will take a significant amount of time. For that, both Ukraine and Russia depend on other nations. As the war drags on, these issues are likely to become even more important. Russia is expected to launch a fresh offensive that will keep burning through its stocks, and Ukraine is already pleading with the West for more ammunition to defend itself.